In this video, I'm going to be talking about how a mirage works and how we see images on the ground that aren't really there or ones that are up in the air that aren't actually there as well. So we first have to cover a few basic physics concepts that relate to how light works and how it bends before we talk about how a mirage works. So first of all, there is a value called n, which is called the index of refraction. And what that is, it is a ratio of C, the speed of light in a vacuum, which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second over V, which is the speed of light in a specific medium. Now what happens is this, I'll make a boundary between two different media. So say for example, we have a medium like air and one like water. Typically there's a dashed line that's perpendicular to the surface. And that perpendicular dashed line is just a reference line so we can see how much air is bent, or excuse me, how light is bent. When it is moving through a medium that is less dense, it is farther away from the normal. When it moves into a medium that is more dense, it bends closer to the normal. So with that in mind, as light is moving through air, air can actually change density as well based on its temperature changes. Now, hotter air has molecules that are moving faster, that are more spread out, so it is less dense, and air that's much colder doesn't move quite as fast. The particles are closer together, therefore it is more dense. So what's happening is this, is that if we have a surface that like sand or a black asphalt, what can happen during the summertime or when there's a lot of sunlight shining on it, it absorbs a lot of heat. So over here, we have a lot of hot air. And then up here, slightly above it, we have some cooler air. It's still probably pretty hot, but not quite as hot as the air that's right above the sand. Now, typically how we see something is that the sun shines light on it. The light comes from the sun, hits that object, reflects, and then when it hits our eyes, then we're able to see that particular object. Now what happens is when there's a difference in these two media with the very hot air and the very cold air, it provides, now there's not exactly a clear cut line between the cooler air and the hotter air, but the air is significantly hotter right by the sand. And then as you rise farther and farther from the surface, it gets a little bit cooler. Okay. But let's just say, for example, there's really hot air and really cold air here, although it's a little bit of a, just a gradual cooling of the air as it rises. But um, what happens is the light from the palm tree is going to move towards the hot air. Let me go ahead and draw a normal in there. And as that light is approaching, it is moving from the cooler air, which is more dense, which means the more dense medium is gonna have the light ray closer to the normal, and it's gonna move something that's less dense, so it's gonna move it farther from the normal, and it's gonna start, start to bend it upwards. So what happens is, as that light gets bent upwards, it can get bent up towards our eye. Now, our brain does something interesting, as we see light coming from a certain source, we never know if it's bending or being reflected. We just always assume that it's going into our eye in a perfectly straight line. So what our eye does is it tracks it backwards and then it sees a mirage, which is basically an image of this palm tree that's on the ground because of this bending. So there's the refraction happening because of the different densities of air. And as it comes down towards that hot air, it gets bent curves up and then move towards our eye. And because our eyes and our brain don't know any different, it just expects light to travel in a straight line to our eye, we see a mirage on the surface. Now, on the other end, there is a mirage called a superior mirage, which isn't quite as common. This is the more um, typical uh, mirage when people think of um, how our mirage works or when they see it in movies or cartoons. Now, this one is actually just the opposite. So say, for example, we have really, really cold water then we would have really, really cold air right above it. And then up here, we would have slightly warmer air. 
Okay, again, there's not a clear cut boundary between the cold air and the warmer air. All we know is that the temperature of the air will rise slightly as you move away from the really cold surface of the water. Now what happens here is, again, you have this boundary, this imaginary boundary between some pretty cold air and sort of warmer air. And what happens is the light that is reflected from the sun off of the boat is going to hit this boundary over here. Let me go ahead and add my normal. Okay, and then remember the, the cold air is the more dense medium. So that should be closer to the normal. And then now we have the warmer air that bends it farther away from the normal. So remember the one that's less dense, in this case air is a lot less dense than water. The one that's less dense is always bent farther away from the normal. So what's gonna happen here is this is gonna bend farther away and then cause the air, or excuse me, the light to bend and refract towards our eye. Now again, what's gonna happen is our brain doesn't know any different. So as the light bends towards our eyeballs, so we're gonna assume that it comes to our eye in a straight line, and then we see a, so we'll see a mirage over here, which will show the boat in a higher position than it's actually at when it's actually on the surface of the water. It may look like it's actually above the surface of the water, and if it's a really tall object, the taller object will seem even taller than it actually is because of this curving of the light rays. So basically how mirages work is a change in the medium and a change in the medium is due to significant changes in temperature, not just minor ones where we have very, very cold water that creates very, very cold air next to its surface, or we have a really, really hot surface such as sand or asphalt, which creates a very, very hot, low density air next to it. And because that change in density from being right by the surface to slightly above it can cause the light to refract, there's this bending of the light, either curving upwards or in this case downwards, and then our eyes perceive that object to be someplace where it isn't, and that is a mirage. So I hope that was helpful and educational to you. Thank you for watching and listening.